You guys have been waiting for it and it's finally here, the Sony X90J. It's this year's follow-up to the very popular X900H. Today, we'll see what it brings to the table and how it stacks up against last year's model. Hi, I'm Brandon, a test developer at Ratings.com where we help you find the best products for your needs. First, we'll look at the design of the TV and then move on to the picture quality. Then, we'll look at the motion handling, inputs, and sound quality. Afterwards, we'll end with our verdict and compare it to competing models on the market. Also, stick around afterwards since we'll be answering some of your questions you had for us. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, then see the links in the description below. We bought the 55 inch models to test, but it's also available in 50, 65, 75, and a massive 100 inch model that goes by the name X92J. For the most part, they should perform similarly, except the 100 inch model has a different speaker configuration and most likely sounds different. So let's get into it. First, the design. From the front, it looks almost identical to the X900H. It's simple and minimalist, pretty on par with previous Sony TVs. The bezels are nice and thin, but the glossy plastic may not be everyone's style. Like the X900H, the stand is wide set, so there's plenty of space for a sound bar, but you might need a wide table. To attach the TV to the feet, it just slides right on from above. No screws required, which is nice. Looking around the backside, this is where the X90J diverges from its predecessor. The back now has a grid-like pattern to it, which looks pretty good, although there is a lot of flex in the back panel and around the borders. And there isn't much of the way in cable management, just clips on the feet to help keep your cables out of the way. The ports are in a cutout on the side, and we'll go into more detail on those in a bit later when we get to the input section. All in all, it's a well-built TV, despite some wobble. It's all plastic, and it's not the thinnest on the market, but it should still look good, whether you prefer to have it on a stand or wall mount it. the design out of the way, let's check out the smart features. This year, Android TV has been replaced with Google TV. It's essentially just a new version of Android, but improves upon it in a couple of ways. First, it's much easier to get set up and logged in. It's also a little smoother and more streamlined with a hub that organizes content from all of your apps into one place. Unfortunately, ads and suggested content have carried over as well, and if anything, they're even more obtrusive. They show up on the homepage and the app store. Sadly, there's no workaround to disable them like there was on Android TV, but you can opt out of getting personalized ads at least. You just have to go to settings and then go down to privacy, go to ads, and here you can see opt out of ads personalization. On the upside, Chromecast is built in, so as long as your devices are on the same network, you can seamlessly cast content from your phone to the TV. The remote is similar to previous Sony models with dedicated shortcut keys to apps like YouTube and Netflix. There's also the voice assistant button, but you need to have Bluetooth enabled on the TV in order to use the voice command feature. With Bluetooth enabled, you can use the Google Assistant to launch apps, search for content, and ask info like the time or weather. Open YouTube. Close YouTube. Change to HDMI 1. All right, let's move on to the picture quality. We'll be comparing the picture quality of the X90J to other TVs that are available right now, but the competition may change as new TVs are released throughout the year. For an updated comparison with the new models as we buy and test them, see the review page on our website, which is linked below. First, let's look at the contrast, which is one of the most important aspects of picture quality. Simply put, it's the ratio between the darkest black and the brightest white that a TV can produce. The contrast ratio on the X90J is fantastic, so dark scenes won't look washed out, even in a dark room. It's a bit of a step up from the X900H, and it's made even better by the local dimming, which improves perceived contrast by dimming sections of the backlight. And speaking of, the local dimming on the X90J is great. It uses full array local dimming, although the 24 dimming zones are somewhat large, so you might notice blooming around text or other small objects. That said, it's more noticeable on our test pattern than with actual content. There's very little black crush, so you don't lose much detail in darker scenes. You can see here in the shot of the Earth in space, most of the stars are maintained. And good news, there isn't much difference with local dimming when the TV is in game mode, so you can play your favorite games without taking a hit in picture quality. Let's move on to the brightness. This is especially important if you have a bright living room that gets lots of light. The TV needs to be bright enough so you can still see the image over any sunlight or glare. 
And the great news is that the X90J has impressive brightness in SDR, more than enough to overcome glare in most rooms. It's slightly brighter than the X900H. Even so, we still don't recommend placing it directly opposite of a window or light source, since its reflection handling is only decent. To really get the brightest highlights to pop in an HDR movie or game, a TV needs to be able to hit some pretty high peaks of brightness. And this is where the X90J really improves upon the X900H. Depending on the scene, it can hit up to 600 or even 700 nits, which is very good. And it performs virtually the same in game mode too. It's slightly dimmer according to our measurements, but it really shouldn't be noticeable, and it's pretty normal behavior since brightness can vary between testing runs. Now onto the uniformity. Starting with the gray uniformity, which is the evenness of solid colors, ours was a step down from the X900H. The corners are noticeably darker and there's some unevenness throughout. However, uniformity is something that can vary from unit to unit, so it's hard to tell if we got a poor performing set or if this is the norm. As for black uniformity, which is how even an all black image looks, it's very good with local dimming turned off, although it has a slight cloudy blue tint. With local dimming turned on, it's all right and about on par with the X900H. It gets rid of all the blue clouding, but now there's blooming around the center cross because of the low number of local dimming zones. If your living room is set up so that you're looking at TV from off center, it's important to get a TV with wide viewing angles so the image stays accurate. Unfortunately, this is not that TV. It uses a VA panel so the image starts to lose accuracy and look washed out as you move off center. But this is typical of most VA panels and some people don't find this as bothersome as others. Moving on to color accuracy. Sony is well known for having great accuracy out of the box and the X90J is no exception. In fact, it's one of the most accurate TVs that we've tested pre-calibration. Any inaccuracies with white balance and color are very minimal, and gamma is pretty on target. While accuracy can vary between units, the X900H also had great accuracy out of the box, so this bodes well for other units. After calibration, everything looks even better. If you want to see our recommended picture settings, then you can check them out right here. Now, let's talk about the color gamut. We were a little surprised to find that the X90J falls just short of our testing criteria to be considered wide for HDR content. However, it's just shy of 67% Rec 2020 coverage needed to do so, and this isn't something that most people would even notice. It still has amazing coverage of the widely used DCI P3 color space, and combined with its high brightness, it should still produce a vibrant HDR experience. Also important for HDR is how smoothly a TV can display color gradients. A TV with bad gradient handling will have visible banding that can get in the way of your enjoyment. Thankfully though, gradients look fantastic on the X90J, and it's no surprise since Sony's are known for having excellent gradient handling. There's only a little bit of banding noticeable in our test pattern, which you can smooth out by turning on the smooth gradation feature, although you may lose some fine details. Before we get to motion, make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and check out our website for the full review and much more. By subscribing, you're helping us reach a wider audience so we can help more people find the best products for their needs. Now, let's get into the motion handling, starting with the response time. The X90J has a great response time, meaning the time it takes for pixels to change from one color to the next is quite fast. This results in less motion blur, so it's great for gaming or fast content like sports. It's a bit faster than the X900H, but not quite as fast as some other TVs on the market, like an OLED TV, so you may still notice some smearing or inverse ghosting. Some TVs can also flicker their backlights at lower frequencies so that a black frame is inserted between actual frames of content in order to reduce motion blur. This is known as black frame insertion, or BFI, and on Sony TVs, it's enabled by adjusting the clearness slider in the motion flow menu. For the best results, a TV should be able to match the flicker frequency with the frame rate of the content. Unfortunately, the BFI on the X90J can only flicker at 120 Hz, even for 60 Hz content, which may cause some image duplication. We also experienced what seems to be a bug, where the TV flickers at both 720 and 120 Hz with BFI, causing very fine lines to appear on the screen. Another feature TVs use to reduce motion blur is motion interpolation, aka the soap opera effect. This is when the TV adds in extra frames to lower frame rate content to make motion look smoother. To enable it, just adjust the smoothness slider in the motion flow menu. It works quite well on the X90J, but in busier scenes, it can create artifacts behind fast moving objects. Some people don't like the soap opera effect, but feel free to try it out and see if it's for you. The X90J has a native 120 Hz refresh rate, but unfortunately it doesn't have VRR support at this time. Sony has said it'll be added in a future firmware update, although it's hard to say when this will happen as Sony promised VRR support on the last year's X900H and it still hasn't gotten that yet. As soon as it does, we'll test it out and update the review on our website.
Now let's circle back around to the inputs. As you can see, it has four HDMI ports, two USB ports, an Ethernet port, a TV tuner, and both a digital and analog audio out. Only HDMI ports 3 and 4 support HDMI 2.1, which is great if you have both a PS5 and an Xbox Series X. However, HDMI port 3 also serves as the ARC or eARC port, which means you might have to sacrifice one of your HDMI 2.1 ports for audio pass-through. On the upside, it supports every audio format, from Dolby Atmos to DTS. And while the X90J doesn't support HDR10+, it does support every other HDR format, including Dolby Vision. Now, onto the input lag. The X90J has very low input lag, as long as you're in the game or graphics mode. That said, it's slightly higher than the X900H, and there are other high-end TVs with even lower latency. But we're talking only a couple of milliseconds, and most people won't notice the difference. Gaming will feel smooth and responsive on this TV. If you hook it up to a PC, the X90J supports every resolution except 1440p. You can force it to do 1440p with a custom resolution at 60Hz, but it doesn't work at 120Hz. And if you want to use it as a PC monitor, it supports Chroma 444 at every resolution, so text won't look as blurry. To enable this, you just need to put it in game or graphics mode. Now let's look at the advanced console compatibility. The Sony X90J can display a 4K signal at 120Hz from either the Xbox Series X or the PS5. But just like the X900H, it can't do Dolby Vision with the Xbox in 4K at 120Hz. So you'll have to choose either 4K at 120 without Dolby Vision or Dolby Vision at 60Hz. It also doesn't have a proper auto low latency mode, but it does have an auto picture mode that works with compatible Sony devices like the PS5 or the PS4 to automatically switch into game mode. But if you have any other device, you'll have to swap to game mode manually. Let's talk about the speakers on this TV. The X90J has a good frequency response, better than most TVs these days. The bass doesn't get low enough to really make an impact, but the sound profile is balanced, meaning clear dialogue. And despite heavy distortion at max volume, there's not too much at moderate volume levels. So overall, they sound good, but audio enthusiasts will likely want something more, like a soundbar or speaker setup. So when it comes down to it, the Sony X90J is a great TV. It performs well for most uses, especially if you're a movie buff or gamer. It has a fantastic contrast ratio and full array local dimming that provides an amazing darkroom viewing experience with inky blacks and great picture quality. It also gets quite bright if you tend to watch in a bright room. And while some gamers may be disappointed with the confusing auto low latency mode, along with the current lack of VRR support, it still delivers an impressive gaming experience. Thanks to the quick response time, low input lag, and two HDMI 2.1 ports. We've been comparing the X90J to the X900H throughout this review, but how do these two TVs really stack up? And as Twitter user Karen Patel Potty asks, is the 2020's X900H worth buying over the 2021's X90J? Well, overall, it's safe to say the Sony X90J is a slight step up from its predecessor, but whether you go with one or the other depends on what your needs and budget are. The X90J improves upon the X900H in a few key areas, Notably, it has a higher contrast ratio, slightly better local dimming, and it can display 4K at 120Hz without issues. And the biggest improvement, HDR. While the X900H does have a wider color gamut, it's only slightly wider and shouldn't make a huge difference. But the X90J's higher HDR brightness and better contrast ratio can really provide a more impactful HDR experience in comparison. That said, if you already have an X900H or you find a good deal on one, it may not be worth upgrading since on the whole they're quite similar. Another upper mid-range LED TV in a similar price range is the Samsung Q80A QLED. Where last year's Q80T might have given the X90J a run for its money, the Q80A is harder to compare since it uses a totally different panel type. The X90J's VA panel has a much better contrast ratio than the ADS panel on the Q80A, so it delivers a better picture quality overall. The biggest reason to pick up the Q80A over the X90J is if you need a TV with wide viewing angles. Now, we're going to answer some of your questions as part of our Ask Ratings hashtag. Tommy Invincible asks, Are you 100% sure 4K at 120 doesn't sacrifice any resolution like the X900H does? That's a fair question. HDMI 2.1 is still quite new, so some older models didn't really implement it well. But as our review states, it works without issues on the X90J. So here we've set up a little demonstration to show it. We have the X90J on my left and the X900H on my right. We have two PCs hooked up to each one. Uh, one's using a 3070 graphics card, the other with a 3080. They're both sending a 4K 120Hz signal. 
On both of them, they're sending uh, YCBR444, limited output range, 8-bit color depth. But you can clearly see a difference in text between these two. It looks a lot clearer on the X90J, whereas on the X900H, it still has that blurry, fuzzy text issue. The next question from Collins Colasso, who is wondering, with the new Google TV smart features, where do you install apps from, and does it have the Google Play Store? Google TV is essentially a new interface plastered over Android TV, so you still get access to all of the same features that you got with Android TV, including the Play Store. It's super easy to find and install apps. OK, so you just need to go to the home page. And up at the top, you'll see apps. And here you can see a bunch of different apps, different categories. And then if, when you find one you like, just install it. So we're going to install VLC. It's from the Google Play Store. And uh, it installs. And our last question from Frendo. Is this Android TV iPhone friendly? It's a good question, and thanks to the Sony including Apple AirPlay, you can. You just need the two devices to be on the same network and using a compatible app. So here, we can hit play on our YouTube video, and then cast it. And then hit play. And there you go. So that's it. What do you think of the Sony X90J? Is it going to be on your must-buy list? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we're a growing company and we're expanding into other product categories. As a result, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. As always, you can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to our latest results first. From all of us here at Ratings, thanks for watching and see you next time.